praise God. One more time, can we appreciate the elevation praise of praise? Can you help me look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I, I will not be moved. I will not be shaking. Say this week, I'm mounting up with fresh strength. Say this week, I will not be afraid. Look at somebody else and tell them God is working something out for you. Tell your neighbor, look on the brighter side. Something is working out for your good. Don't be shaking. Praise God. I said, praise God. Uh, somebody wants to appreciate God, please do it a little bit. Can you let me ask your neighbor how their week went? Make sure your neighbor is smiling at you. If not, you can relocate. It's not by force. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we come to church like this, it's time to encourage one another as members of the same family of God. And so whether you're sitting with someone or beside someone that you know before or somebody you don't know before, um, don't worry, it's just for the next maybe about uh, 15 minutes. So you can bear, even if you don't want to smile, smile for, for Jesus' sake. Let me put it down here. <laughs> just smile at somebody. Uh, uh, let somebody feel good that is sat beside you today. You know, people may not remember the color of your dress or how good you are looking, but they will always remember how you make them feel when they come around you. Yeah. People should leave us feeling taller, feeling better, feeling stronger. So can you hear me say something to your neighbor that will make them feel better? <laughs> Somebody's, I can hear somebody's spirit. <laughs> say the best way to do it is just do something that will make me get an alert. Yes, sir. I will, I will feel better. <laughs> That's for another day. And I want to welcome everyone joining us online. If so, first time joining us online, we want to appreciate you and welcome you to church this morning. Uh, we appreciate your, your uh, fellowshipping with us today. And we thank you for, for joining us. We believe that God who sent you into this service this morning, he has a plan for you. He has uh, something in mind for you, and we believe that uh, you will not miss out on God's plan for you today in Jesus' name. Uh, so if you're joining us online, I want you to stay with us, take distractions away from us as we go into the Word of God. We believe, according to the Bible, that where the Word of the King is, there is power, and it's power for transformation and power for change. So if you put your attention on God's Word right now, we believe that God will meet you at the very point of need in Jesus' precious name. Praise God. Great things are happening around us, and I believe that God is working in our nation to turn things around. Uh, uh, we commiserate with the people of uh, Zampara State, and all the negative things happening around there, we believe that it has started from this week, that things are turning around. The military and the, 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 the armed forces are taking position, and we believe there will be an end to killing in Zampara State in Jesus' name. Um, whether you are from northern Nigeria or not, it's one Nigeria. And I want us to continue to pray, uh, especially for people in the Northeast and now in some, uh, Zampara State and I think around the Northwest. Uh, some kind of, I don't know what to call it, but we believe uh, that our God rules and reigns in the affairs of men. And he has a way of turning things around for our good. Um, as we pray for Nigeria, I want us to continue to pray, especially for Northern Nigeria. As much as we are one family, one nation. We cannot continue to look away from what's going on around there. It's not easy for a nation not to be at war, but people are dying on a daily basis. We may think there's no war in this nation, but people who live in northern Nigeria know that we're in a warfare. Yeah. A lot of the attacks going on there are bandits who people who have encountered them say that they may not even be Nigerians. So we're literally in a warfare situation, but it's not a traditional warfare <clears throat> because we cannot define who the enemy is. The enemy is not another nation, you know, and stuff like that. So it makes it difficult 
to handle. And we can only pray that God will continue to give our leaders, you know, the, the, uh, the understanding of, on how to resolve this issue. And everyone that is sabotaging the effort to resolve the issue, that God will take them out. I say it better, amen. amen. So we need to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters from that region of the country. That God will protect them. The high DPs are busting in their scenes. I mean, just, just things are just happening around there. Uh, and if you know any organization that we can also partner with to uh, be able to be a blessing to them, we have some missionaries and some organizations that we partner with currently uh, just to be able to be a blessing to them. Please send us the information and we will be able to, to do that. On a daily basis, people are moving into that internally displaced persons camp. I read up about Zamfara State. There are three locations currently uh, where in some of the places in one room, 50 people in one room, 25 people in one room. And they're just like you and I, the Nigerians like you and I, who should have access to peace and, you know, peaceable habitation and the commonwealth of this nation. So we can't continue to look away and just behave as if nothing is happening there. A lot is going on there. And for this nation to change, uh, all the different parts of the nation must change. If you look at the number of out-of-school kids in northern Nigeria, especially in the places where there's unrest, don't forget that these kids are going to grow up into adulthood. I'm actually thinking of, you know, doing a video very soon um, with my friends. My friends, I have new friends, they are on this road. Yeah, I meet with them on a daily basis and we chat. They are like six, seven year old to about 15, 16. They are from northern Nigeria. They litter this road wherever there's traffic. I was telling my PA yesterday that we'll, we'll create time where I can park, come out of the car, and actually interact with them. Because I roll down my glass all the time, give them stuff. In fact, we are so close now that if I'm eating in the car, they ask, can I give them? Pastor, can we have shawarma? Take. Can we have water? I have bottled water in the car. I give them. And anytime I get into the, to the traffic light, they call themselves, Pastor is there, Pastor is there. They know me, they know my name. Yesterday, someone said, God, my is here, God, my is here. And, and it's a young boy like this. And they rushed and called themselves. And I said, oh, how are you? Are you going to church tomorrow? They say, yes, we'll try to go. So I said, after service tomorrow, I will see you. And I'm bringing something for you. That's how we relate. These kids are, in fact, one of them approached me last Saturday. My peer will bear witness. He said, Pastor, I'm going to Kano tomorrow. Small girl, she can't be more than six or seven. I said, what are you going to do in Kano? I don't know. They just told me that we're going to Kano tomorrow. He said, only God knows what will happen to me. He was pointing to heaven. I said, only God knows what will happen to me. Yeah. It's just, and it's just a, a young girl. So that, that's the, the, the way our nation is right now. We have to you know, pray for them. We have to meet their needs, knowing that uh, if they remain uneducated, they are going to grow up into adulthood and contribute to the problem of the nation. Yeah, because a lot of our issues right now is based on ignorance and illiteracy. Yeah. Let me preach. Yeah, we'll continue another time. This is Act 1, Scene 1. We move to uh, Act 1, Scene 2 very soon. Maybe in another week or two. Praise God. This morning... Uh, we want to continue in the series of teachings on the blessed man. We have established the fact that the blessed man is the one who has a covenant with God. If you have not been in church for a while, you need to get other messages from this series and listen again and again. In the last part of the series, like I said a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, that we're going to be looking at the blessed man and his job and career how the life of a blessed man should pan out on his job, on his career. We've looked at it from different perspectives, but we're now coming down on how the blessing of God shows up eh, on our job, on our careers. And this morning, I'm talking about succeeding with people. Succeeding with people. Succeeding with people. It's important for us to understand that people are doors that can present opportunities, promotions, elevations, and at the same time, they can be traps 
weights, distractions, and etc. Yeah. People are all kinds of things to us. People bring opportunities to us. They can open the door to us to get promotions in life. People are like elevators. You meet some people and they just literally take you to the next level of your life. Just getting in contact with them. This presupposes that winning with people is very key if we want to walk in the blessings of God. A blessed man knows how to win with people. Winning with people, by the way, requires emotional intelligence. And that's what we're going to talk about a little more today. Winning with people requires emotional intelligence. When we look through the Bible, God emphasized the need for us to win with people very often. But many people, you will choose not to listen to God in that area. We choose how we want things to be when it comes to our dealing with, dealings with people. Uh, for everyone who has been on the career path for, for uh, more than a decade now, you will understand that your, your progress on your career path will not only depend on your skillfulness or the things that you know but how you win with people. How you win with people. It's the same in business. It's not just about business acumen. It's not just about the technicalities of the business. When you choose to learn how to win with people, you make you know, faster progress. You, 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 you get better in business. You get better result than somebody who doesn't know how to win with people. So emotional intelligence is a reflection of the wisdom of God and the effect of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. People in the marketplace and, you know, ordinary people will just say emotional intelligence. But we know that winning with people, getting emotional intelligence, is beyond something that is natural. It should be an offshoot of the wisdom of God that comes upon a blessed man. It should be an offshoot of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer or in the life of a covenant person. All through the Bible, we see people who won with people. Abraham won with people. In Genesis 21, when you read from verse 31, you see Abimelech, the king, coming into a covenant, requesting a covenant with Abraham. It started very rough. In fact, Abraham had to go into manipulation. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Abraham had to go into a bit of manipulation, lying about, you know, his wife and all that because he was struggling to win with people. A lot of us will start our journey of winning with people with a bit of struggle, trying to cut corners or manipulate people. Winning with people is not about manipulation. It's not about lying to cover up. It's not about positioning to be who you are not. It's primarily about knowing the God you serve and knowing what God has given you and how he wants you to gain control of it to dominate and to win with people. Is somebody still here this morning? So, uh, Abraham started out with manipulation. Genesis uh, uh, 21, you know, it's not my wife, this, that, that, that. Then eventually the king realized that he was lying and, you know, uh, winning with people in business is very important. Abraham won with people in business. At the end of the day, uh, Abraham saw that God was working things out for him already. He didn't have to lie and manipulate. To the point that Abimelech had to come into an agreement, a covenant with him, and then his business took a new turn. When you read towards the end of Genesis 21, when you get to read it, you see that he's, he, the, the, Abraham was blessed. His business took a new turn. Isaac also encountered the same principality called Abimelech. Abimelech came to Gerah and harassed the living daylight out of Isaac. The, in Genesis 26, the men of Gerah quarreled with Isaac. That's in his business. Dug a well, they said no, they stopped, stopped, stopped the well, dug another one, dug another one, until when you get to Genesis 26 and verse 31 again, Isaac also had the privilege of these guys coming to him and say, let's come into an agreement with you. Can you give me Genesis 26 and verse 31 quickly? Genesis 26 and verse 31. Then they arose early in the morning and saw 
and holds with one another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. Somebody say in peace. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to get into too much of reading yet. We're going to do a bit of reading. That's why I'm just giving you this. And I, I think if you have something to write, you should write this down so you can read it, you know, on your own. Isaac won with people. These guys came to break his heart, to destroy his business. But God gave him wisdom, and he won with them. They came into one accord with him. Joseph won with Pharaoh. That's a career situation. That was a career situation. Yeah. The skill is not enough. Somebody recommended Joseph in Pharaoh's palace. The Bible says when Joseph would come out of the prison, he went, he, he knew what we call the palace protocol, that you would not appear before Pharaoh just anyhow. He went, had a bath, changed his clothes, shaved himself. And appeared before Pharaoh the way you're supposed to appear before Pharaoh. Notwithstanding the level of skill you have, when you don't look like it, people second guess the grace you carry. Yeah. And you, you, at that point, you start losing with people. It starts from that point. You start losing with people. You start losing with people. They, they, you know, people need to hear you before they can do business with you. When the devil wants to deal with a business person, somebody on a good career path, it puts something in place where people don't want to listen to you. You just realize that nobody wants to listen to you. Yeah, they don't want to listen to you. Uh, you, you try, but they say, you know what? Don't bother coming for the meeting. Yeah. Something has gone wrong there. And a lot of the time, Christians would then go and pray and pray. If that prayer would not result into wisdom on how to win with people, that prayer is not working, my brother. It's, 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 it's just spiritual gymnastics. Yeah. You know, you know, a lot of the time when we pray, one of the mistakes we make is that we expect God to move outside, but not inside. Yeah. People pray, and you are so focused on the person that is giving you problem at work. You are so focused on the person that is harassing your business. When we pray, God gives us wisdom to win with people. So our prayer starts a, a new work in us first. My prayer must affect me before it affects my situation. Somebody say with me today. Yeah. God wants to do something in me before he starts to do something outside of me. Philippians 4 and verse 6, the Bible says, Be anxious for nothing, fret for nothing. Don't agitate yourself. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And he said, The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart. The first effect of the prayer is that peace comes into my heart. That peace creates a premise for a flow of wisdom. Wisdom doesn't try it in uh, an atmosphere of chaos. So when peace comes into my heart, the wisdom of God starts to flow into my heart. And before I know it, I start to see or know how to handle the situation better. Is somebody still with me today? Because when I change, things change. Many people want things to change without them changing at all. Yeah. God wants your thinking, your perspective, your worldview about the situation to change. Then it starts to change something out there. Yeah. You know, I'm a relationship coach. I tell people a lot of the time when I counsel couples, people who want to get married, that, look... <laughs> A lot of the time, people want their spouses to change before they change. And God is saying, you change. Change. Then leave your spouse to me. Yeah. Leave your spouse to me. You do. You, you change. Change. Let me work on you. If you can open your heart to me to work on you, then I can work on your spouse. Is somebody sit with me this morning? This house is very quiet. Looks like the Holy Ghost is he's eating some people below the belt this morning. Not me. It's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> You know, I, I, I tell you that anytime people are quiet, that's the message I enjoy the most. So I'm feeling good right now. <laughs> because I know that something is entering. Praise God. I said, praise God. Tap your neighbor for me. Tell your neighbor it's time to win with people. So Joseph won with people, won with Pharaoh, and gained career acceleration. You can imagine just one encounter and he won with the most important person. And the person said, who else, why should we be recruiting? 
If we can find you, why should we recruit for prime minister position when you are here? Yeah. May God open a, a, a huge door for someone here. Yeah. yeah. A door that the enemy will not be able to shut. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because, you know, for Pharaoh, it was just like one night with the king, you know, just, 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 just win with people, and then the doors started to open, and Pharaoh said, there's no point, you know, recruiting. We know that we need a prime minister, but this guy, I think, is just cool enough for it. He's wise. The Spirit of God is in him. You know, he has the skills. He solved my problem. Just put him in. Just open the door for him. Even in relationship issues, root one with Boaz. In the book of Ruth, when you read through it, winning with people just open doors to you. Open doors to you. Jesus also won with people. Jesus won with people. Jesus won with the Pharisees, for instance. When the woman was caught in adultery and they brought the woman to Jesus, they said they caught her in the very act. Caught her in adultery in the very act. And you know, they wanted to, to, to get Jesus. And just, the, the, the idea is to hold him down, was to hold him down. You know, the, 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 the kicker there was that if Jesus said, stone her, he would have negated his own message, which is love and compassion. If he said, don't stone her, he would have broken the law of Moses. So the Pharisees came to get him because they thought he would say, don't stone her. Yeah. Today we can say that Jesus lived and he did not break any law. If he had said, don't stone her, so instead of saying don't stone her, he said, by the wisdom of God, whoever has not committed any sin before, cast the first stone. I give you permission. <laughs> so they couldn't leave to say, he said we should not stone her. The only thing was that he said, if you have not done any wrong before, then cast the first stone. That's the effect of the wisdom of God at winning with people. Someone here, you will escape a trap. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. What is working against other people to lose their careers will not be able to hold you down. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So there are traps everywhere. In business, in career. And God will want to give you wisdom from time to time to win with people. So emotional intelligence is not manipulation. God doesn't work in us to manipulate. He gives us wisdom to win with people. Manipulation is controlling or influencing or altering things unfairly, unscrupulously, so as to mislead or for selfish reasons. That's manipulation. What I'm talking about this morning is not manipulation. I must emphasize that. It's not manipulation. Winning with people is not manipulating people. Winning with your spouse is not manipulating your spouse. Yeah. Winning at work is not manipulating your boss and showing productivity figures that are fake. Yeah. Winning with, winning with people is not falsifying your CV. I need to say all that so that you understand is God giving you wisdom to write the right things that you have done in the CV so that it will be rightly perceived. Is somebody still with me today? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not manipulating people. It's not controlling on or influencing or altering things unfairly. Real emotional intelligence, winning with people, is a capacity to be aware of, be in control, and express one's emotion, and to undo interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. That's, that's real emotional intelligence of winning with people. Yeah. And we see this all through the scriptures. Let me read a scripture uh, from the book of James. James chapter 3. From verse 13. Or let, 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 let me just cut through and just go straight to, uh, okay, from verse 13. Let's read from verse 13. James 3 and verse 13. Can you, can you put up, uh, okay, let's read from New King James. I, I actually wanted to read from the New Living Translation. It said, who is wise and understanding among you? 
Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie, do not boast and lie against the truth. Verse 15 says, This wisdom does not descend from above. Manipulative wisdom is not from God, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Look at the next verse. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. If you're running your career like this right now, you cannot say you're a blessed man because the wisdom you're using is not from God. Yeah, it's not from God. It's not from God. If this is how you run your business right now, if it's dog eat dog, cut people down, no mercy, no grace, let's make money. And that's how some people run. Then, that wisdom is not from God. Look at verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Somebody say pure. Then peaceable. Say peaceable. Can I pause to say this? Another translation, New Living Message Translation. Peaceable means easily entreatable. I tell people, when everybody is begging you, only you, five people are begging you, I say, no, no, I will show him pepper. The wisdom that is driving you is demonic. It's sensual. It's ugly. It's not from God. The wisdom of God is easily entreatable in all situations of life. Easily entreatable. Peaceable. Gentle. Willing to yield. Willing to yield. They said improve your relationship with your boss. Say, for what? For what? Is he only him in this place? We will show ourselves. You are showing yourself. Yeah, you're showing yourself. Willing to yield. The Bible says, oh, no, people are in authority because you didn't put them there. God put them there. Somebody can be your boss and it's temporal, but whilst that last show or no, be willing to yield to superior reasoning if you want to operate in the wisdom of God. Said it's willing to yield, full of mercy and of good fruit, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's the wisdom that we're talking about. That's how God guides us to win with people. Not manipulate people, but to win with people. To win with people. So we need to trust God for the ability to read people, read situations, and prefer the right solutions. We're made for connection and not isolation. We need to always remember that. That we're made for connection and not isolation. We're supposed to be at peace with all men bringing out the best in them. Bringing out the best in them. So can you let me tap your neighbor and say you're made for connection? Not isolation. Yeah. Before I go any further, I must also insist on this, that don't use false spirituality as a cloak to disguise emotional immaturity. Many of us are growing spiritually, but are not growing emotionally. And it's important to emphasize that. So when you see people saying things like, you know, there, there, there are false things that we say, we turn scriptures around. Uh, one with God is a majority, so I don't need people. Yeah, I have a few of that. Can you put it, my next slide on? Yeah. One with God is a majority. I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah. The Bible says we are more, not you. We, all of us. It's not only you. Go and check the scripture very well. Romans chapter 8, it said, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So it's good to personalize it, but don't personalize it into isolation. Yeah. One with God is a majority. It's true, but God doesn't want you to be alone. Yeah. Because he wants to use people to bless you. Yeah. Whether in family, on your career path, at, in business, don't, 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 don't say those that be with us are more than those that be. God wants people to be with you. Yeah. God is with you quite all right, but he wants people to be with you. We are not created for isolation. We are created for connection. And God wants to use people for you. He wants to use people for you. Don't justify your sense of loneliness or isolation, maybe that's the better word, for spirituality. 
You can be holy and righteous and be loved. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When you operate it within the confines of the wisdom of God. But when you use, you know, you just want to prove to everybody that you're better than everybody. Yeah, I will speak my mind, speak my mind. Yeah. Some people spoke their mind and they landed into trouble. It's not in every situation that you speak your mind. That's what I'm saying. The wisdom that's above is easily entreatable. It's gentle. Yeah. It's gentle. John the Baptist spoke his mind. He landed in prison. Yeah. Because if he wasn't in prison at the time where that young lady said, give me the head of John the Baptist, they wouldn't have been able to get it. But it was already caged. Jesus was living at that time too. Yeah. But John spoke, he spoke very rashly about the king's uh, situation. The, the king did the wrong thing. Don't, don't, I, I'm not saying that the king was okay. He took his brother's wife. But John, I don't know what happened. Whether he didn't pray enough to ask God, God, should I confront him now? How should I say it? Because there's a way of approach, even to people in authority. Yeah. Yeah. You appeal to authority, you don't confront authority anyhow. You pray and you appeal to their conscience. And you speak words to them that will appeal to their conscience. Whether at home, at work, you appeal to authority. Yeah. John landed in prison and at the end of the day. Yeah, he was no more. And Jesus just continued his own ministry. And then he got bitter that Jesus did not rescue him. Yeah. Say, are you the one to come or we should expect another? <laughs> Jesus said, go tell John, the blind see, the lame walk, and blessed is he who is not offended in me. Because I did not tell you to run your mouth. <laughs> Are you, are you still with me today? <laughs> Praise God. The proof of your healthy relationship with God is that you have a healthy relationship with men. Yeah. Don't try to prove to us that you are so spiritual you cannot cope with human beings. You want to live with angels. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way some people posture it. You know, I'm just too so spiritual for all these people. In fact, they're annoying me, they're pissing me off because they're, they're just so, yeah. Don't, don't give us that. Yeah. First John chapter 4, when you read from verse 20, the Bible says in First John 4 and verse 20, if someone says, I love God and hate his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? How can he love God whom he has not seen? It's a big question. If you love God, one of the ways you show it is by loving people. And it starts from your home, starts especially from your office, starts from your business environment, your partners, staff, colleagues. That's how we show that the love of God abides in us. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You can have a strong vertical relationship with God but poor horizontal relationship with people. It's possible. We saw it in the life of Elijah, the prophet. In 1 Kings chapter, uh, chapter 19, when you read from verse 4, Elijah was complaining to God, and he said, God, kill me. Elijah was still talking to God. God was hearing him. That means they had a strong relationship. But he was frustrated, he was depressed, and he isolated himself, and he felt he was the only one remaining. That's how some people behave. Like, I'm the only one that's still righteous in the whole of this world. Elijah said, uh, you know, all of Israel, they, t they tore down your altar, they started loving the altar of Baal, you know, just kill me, I'm frustrated. Yeah, they killed all the prophets. When you, when you go further to read uh, from verse uh, 14 down to 18, you put that up for me, from verse 14 down to 18, the Bible made us to understand that when God started to deal with Elijah, he told him, uh, since you are frustrated, you are depressed, I'll just allow you to go. So he gave him his assignment. Uh, uh, in verse 14, he said, I've been very zealous. This is Elijah, Elijah talking. For the Lord uh, of hosts, because of the children of Israel. I've forsaken the, uh, the children of Israel. I've forsaken your altar, turned down your altars, and killed the prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Look at verse 15. 
Then the Lord said to him, go, return to your way by the wisdom wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Azael as king over Syria. And then he said, anoint Jehu as king uh, over Israel. And Elisha as prophet in your place. That means I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And then later I told him, go on. Then he said, and it shall be that whoever escaped the sword of Azael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escaped the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. And look at verse 18. Yet I have reserved how many? How many? 7,000 7, in Israel, all whose knee have not bowed to bear, and every mouth that has not kissed him. You are not alone. Yeah. These are the people that God wanted Elijah to connect with. Elijah was just God, 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 God. To the point that he was frustrated. He, was, he still had a strong relationship with God, but God said, I can't use this guy any further because of his inability to connect with people. So he said, let me replace you. Go and get Elisha, anoint him in your place. Jehu, put him over Israel. Azahel, put him over Syria. They will continue my work. You, I will take you up by the wing. Elijah disappeared. May you not disappear before your time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you only focus on this vertical relationship with God only, you are fighting everybody in your house, but you are, your prayer is the loudest. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. What happens to such people? God boycotts them. I'm not the one who wrote the Bible. You saw it there. Yeah. Can you hear me tap your neighbor? Say, love people. Love people. Connect with people. Connect. Win with people. people. Let me start to tie this all up with the framework that a lot of us here may be uh, aware of or used to. And that's the framework, the emotional intelligence framework. Yeah. The emotional intelligence framework. So there are four skills to develop and I know many people here will probably have done all kinds of courses on emotional intelligence. I'm just bringing out, I mean, we're, we're, we're bringing this out in the light of the scripture. So you understand that the wisdom that I even taught him in business schools and all that, they're scriptural wisdom, they're, they're wisdom from the scriptures. They may not teach it from the Bible, but that's what it is. That's what we see all through the Bible. Uh, in, in the emotional intelligence framework, you see there, the first one is the need for self-awareness. Then empathy, which is social awareness, understanding what's going on around you, the needs of people around you. You, are, first of all, need to know yourself. Then the needs of people around you. Then self-management or control, living a life that is controlled, that is tempered, that you are able to manage yourself, manage your emotions. And then social skills and relationships. Yeah, this is the emotional intelligence framework. If you run a small business, if you don't understand this, you will struggle to grow that business. If you're on a career path, you don't understand this, you will struggle to make a headway in your career. Meanwhile, God wants to give you wisdom. Wisdom to win with people because people are doors. People are elevators. People open you up to your next level. God doesn't want us to live alone or walk alone in this world. He wants you to love him. But Jesus said, the, the first commandment and the second one, they are alike. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might. And love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, these two, they are on the same level. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So self-awareness. Why are you where you are? What are your strengths? What advantages do you have at your disposal? You need to be aware of yourself. You need to be aware of yourself. In Esther chapter 4, and I will, I will end with this, the, the, the story of Esther. In Esther chapter 4, when you read from Esther chapter 1, for instance, you understand the scope of what Esther was dealing with. The Bible says in Esther chapter 1, I think from verse 1, can you put that up for me? Esther 1 and verse 1. It talked about, it said, now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this was the Ahasuerus who reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. It meant that this Ahasuerus, this king, permit me to just go into this a bit, I'll come back to the framework, was a king that was in control of a territory that was from the Far East to Middle East to Africa. It was a large territory. And uh, uh, verse 2 actually, okay, no, verse, that's verse 1 talked about 127 provinces. 
This is what the sphere of control of Ahasuerus the king. This was the king that married Esther, that little slave girl. Now, all the Jews within this territory were under an attack. It was a looming genocide. They were going to annihilate all of them. And the masterminder was Haman. If you have not read the book of Esther before, please go home and read it. And God was going to count on one person to turn this situation around. If God will have to count on you to turn a business around, to turn an industry around, to turn the fortune of a people around, and it will depend on your capacity to win with people, will it be a positive adventure or a negative one? That's a big question for this morning. Yeah. If God will depend on you to turn a family around, to turn a business around, yeah, to turn a whole establishment around. You know, sometimes we know what is going wrong in an establishment. You have the wisdom to turn it around, but the capacity to, to, to win with people is what is lacking. Because you are bringing up the ideas, they are shooting it down, because you don't have a, a, a deposit with such people. You don't have anything to leverage with such people. The people who amplify your voice, who will sell your ideas, You've lost favor with them because you, you didn't connect properly. Yeah. And you know the problem with us Christians is that we will we, we pray, we will do night VG, we will do day VG, we will do everything on top of it, and God is saying, let me walk in you first. I want to walk in you. Because when something you know, changes in you on how you see people, how you relate with people, then this situation will change. You can get into a boardroom and all your ideas have been shut down because the people there don't like you. But if you start to allow the wisdom of God to teach you how to win with people, God will be able to use you maximally. A whole people, race of people, the Jews, they were depending on their faith to escape genocide was depending on one person. And if not that Esther... Learn how to win with people. That situation would not have worked out well. So, Esther, understanding her strength, what she has, she knew that there's an obstacle here. If I go into the king, for 30 days the king has not sent for her. Yeah, for 30 days. And you don't go to the king except the king sent for you. And Esther was talking, sending messages to her uncle, Mordecai, and saying, you know, M Mordecai said, you need to go and appeal. Amman has already built, you know, the, 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 the thing with which he was going to hang Mordecai and then call for the king to approve the genocide to kill all of the Jews. And at the end of the day, Esther sent a message to her uncle. Can we read from... Um, um, Esther, Esther chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, from verse 10. Then Esther spoke to Atachi and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court of the king who has not been called, he has but one law. Put all to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king, into the king these 30 days. So they told Mordecai Esther's word. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Look at this. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply Mordecai, go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan. And fast for me. 
neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. So you guys are not prayer contractors. We also are going to pray. That's what he was saying. Yeah. My maid and I will fast likewise. And uh, look at that. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. So Esther sought the face of God for the wisdom of God on how to win with the king so that she could save a whole nation. When it comes to saving a business, moving your career forward, you must leverage the wisdom of God, especially in these four areas that we're talking about, to be able to win with people. Know who you are. Be self-aware. Esther knew everything that was going on around her. She knew her areas of competence. She knew she could put up a banquet that when the king eats there, the king must ask, what do you want? Yeah. It's about knowledge. It's about knowing what to do. Sometimes you don't even have to talk. When you know to do the right thing, it's people that will be asking you, how can I help you? Yeah. How can I help you? How can I help you? And what Esther did was not to go to the king and just ask or and just speak. You know he organized that banquet twice. Yeah. It wasn't on this, the second time that Esther put his a request on the table. And also it's important to note that the prayer that went on there to seek divine intervention and the wisdom of God caused the king to lose his sleep after the first banquet. That the king had to ask is there somebody in this territory whom we are indebted to that has done anything good for us and we have refused to repay the person? And he said, there was one man who reported a coup once and nothing has been done for him. What's his name? Mordecai. Yeah. The story started to turn around. By the time Esther will show up before the king eventually in the second banquet and say, somebody wants to kill all, all myself and all of my people. The king already had the Jews on good record, already. Because God had gone ahead to do what he had to do. God will do what he will do when we do what we should do. Somebody say with me today. Yeah. When we do what we should do. So the second one, empathy and social awareness is very important. Who do you have a burden for? Do you feel the need of others? And how can you be a solution provider? It's very important. Esther has to come to that place where her position in the palace will not rob her of capacity for empathy. Yeah. And social awareness about what our people are going through and what is about to befall them. And that was part of what motivated her. We need social awareness and empathy to be able to step into other people's shoes. You are a boss at work. Emotional intelligence demands that you understand what people are going through in their own families. Yeah. Somebody's wife just delivered. Yeah. You may have finished delivering all your kids and your kids are now adults. But you must be able to think about what it was like when your wife was giving birth. So you don't talk to the young man as if he was just indolent. No. He's got issues at home to deal with. Empathy. And social awareness will... will, will will make you to think about that. Think about what people are going through around you before you, you know, relate to them. And self-management, which is the third one, self-management. Embrace self-discipline. Know when to be sober, vigilant, and then manage your emotions. Galatians 5 and verse 22, the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 22, the fruit of the Spirit. See, winning with people, emotional intelligence, is an offshoot of the inner workings of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Yeah. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Yeah. Goes on and on. Gentleness, self-control, 
Bible says against such there's no law. A huge part of winning with people is allowing the Holy Spirit to develop in you the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. When you realize that you just blow the gasket anyhow, burn the fuse anyhow, talk to people anyhow, you know, you need to be aware that the Holy Spirit wants to do a fresh work in you. Yeah. It's not about the people. It's about you. Other people can go through the same thing and still be calm and relax and be a blessing to people and walk them through the problem. Can I say something to somebody here this morning? I don't know who you are, but the Holy Spirit just put in my heart to tell you. That nasty email that you sent, you need to apologize for it. And make up your mind you're not going to send such emails again. I don't know who you are, but I'm talking to you right now by the Spirit. Yeah. Someone here, I don't know whether in the past week or two weeks ago, whenever you sent a nasty email, I'm talking about something that happened recently. You have all the justification in the world to send that email, but it doesn't have to be that nasty. Yeah. And you need to apologize for it and take it back. Because it's going to count against you in the future. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you right now. I'm saying this by the Spirit. Yeah. God knows who you are. I mean, you know who you are and God knows you. And you just need to take this in the spirit of meekness. Yeah. As you go back to work tomorrow. So you go back to that email, apologize for it, take it back. Yeah. And pray about what I'm saying right now. So that the Holy Spirit can direct you on how, what you lay on top of it. Because he said that thing is going to count against you in the future. Yeah. So you need to rework it right now. Praise God. And lastly, this morning, social skills and relationships. That's the fourth part of the emotional intelligence quadrant. Esther, preparing a banquet, putting the right atmosphere in place. Ability to read your audience. Yeah. She read her audience right. She was deliberate about our approach. We need to ask you, what's your strategy? Because it's very important that you have a strategy which is born out of social awareness, leveraging your relationships properly. Leveraging your relationships properly. Knowing people. You know, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, a guy came to announce the death of Saul to David. And he told David, that he even lied that he was the one that killed Saul because he thought he would get a reward. The guy lacked emotional intelligence. He, he, he wanted to win with people by manipulation. He didn't know that David, as much as he knew that Saul hated him, did not want Saul to die anyhow. If he wanted to, him to die anyhow, he would have killed him himself. He had the opportunity. And he knew whoever killed Saul will not be guiltless. And then somebody now came, stupid man. He saw that Saul has been killed. He now ran to David. Read it in 1 Samuel there. He, he, he ran to David and he, 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 he told David, Saul is dead. And this, this, this happened. And then I killed him. David called for his head. Yeah. It's lack of emotional intelligence. Inability to read your environment. Yeah. To have social awareness. And to manage the relationships around you. Because some people just believe, you know, Whatever comes to your head, do. Ask the Holy Spirit. He wants to guide you. He wants to guide you. Lastly, this morning, if you are introverted, there's a possibility that everything I've said this morning, you would think that we're pitching it against you. Yeah. Because introverts believe that they don't have a way with people. See, here, I, I want to learn this this morning by helping you to understand that there's no bad temperament. Every temperament is good. Every personality type is good. You just need to leverage it very well and learn the parts that are alien to you. I'm not saying you have to push yourself at people. I'm saying you have to be, allow the Holy Spirit to walk within you. That's what we call spirit-controlled temperament, where the Spirit of God helps you to leverage your strength and help you to shape, I mean, to, to help to shape your areas of weakness. So don't think because 
I'm introverted. I can't win with people. There's nothing like that. Yeah. Some, of, some, some people that you see winning with people are introverted. They've just come to a place where they know that God wants to use them. God wants to use them. There's more proof through what we read in the book of Esther that Esther was more likely to be an introverted person than an extroverted person. Because if it was an extrovert, she would have gone to the king anyhow. Instead of wearing a robe, it's underwear she would wear. Yeah. Or she wouldn't just wear much. She'd just say, king, 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 king. King. Yeah. And maybe the king will have just say, go and kill her. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this trouble right now. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. She, she, she depended more on God than the strength of her temperament. That's what I'm trying to say. She called for prayers. She was waiting on God to understand what is the formula for winning with the king this time around. It's not about personality type. It's about leveraging the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit to know what to do from time to time so that you are never stranded in your journey of life. Glory be to Jesus. Will you lift your two hands to Jesus this morning and say, God, give me wisdom to win with people. Give me wisdom to win with people. Give me the wisdom to win with people. Somebody, you need to humble yourself this morning. You won't always be right. You need wisdom to win with people. The reason why you're not seeking wisdom is because you are too full of yourself you think you know more than everybody. That's the one thing that makes people run away from you. Will you ask this morning, Lord, give me the wisdom to win with people. Help me not to be too full of myself. Help me to understand that you want to use me to bless people. Help me to understand that you want to use me to demonstrate your love to people in business, in my office. I wanted to pray this morning. Don't take this for granted. Wisdom is available here. Where the word of the king is, there's power. There's a power of the wisdom of God here today to win with people. Wherever, wherever you may be working, even if you are in politics right now, you need wisdom to win with people. And you need to pray this morning, Lord, give me the wisdom to win with people. Give me the wisdom to win with people. I don't want to be a manipulator. I want to be led by your spirit. I want the wisdom that is pure, that is from above, that is easily entreatable, that is gentle. Lord, give me wisdom, just like you gave Isaac, just like you, you, gave, you, 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 you gave Abraham. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Wisdom, like you gave Ruth to walk with, with, with Boaz. Give me wisdom. Somebody pray this morning. Wisdom like you give Esther to deliver a whole nation. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Somebody needs to pray this morning. Give me wisdom to deliver this business. Give me wisdom to deliver my industry. Give me wisdom to play my part in this establishment. Give me the wisdom. I know that this establishment has issues. Give me the wisdom of a soft answer. That turns away wrath. Wisdom of a soft answer. Wisdom of appeal. To know when to confront and when to just appeal. Wisdom of a soft answer. That I will not send the wrong email. I will not send the wrong WhatsApp message. I will not be rash. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. If you're watching online, you need to say this prayer with us also this morning, just trusting God for wisdom. Lord, give us wisdom. Lift your two hands with me all over this place. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Before I say the final prayer this morning, I just have an impression in my spirit that people here who need to mention particular people's name and say, Lord, give me the wisdom to walk with this person. Yeah. You mention the person's name. Give me the wisdom to love this person and to walk with this person. So that all the hatred and animosity in your heart will melt away right now. And then you are able to access the wisdom of God to know how to walk with this person. That somebody listening to me right now. Your boss is a lady. You've gone through hell and high water with that person. Yeah. 
you want to leave your job right now just because of that one person. And God is saying, I put you here for just a time like this. You just need to trust me for wisdom to work with this person. I want you to lift your two hands to God this morning. If you can mention a name, mention it to God and say, Lord, give me the wisdom to live and to work with this person. Somebody needs to pray about your partner, your business partner. That partnership is almost going bad right now. But you can ask God for wisdom on how to manage that person, manage the situations that surround that partnership. Will you pray right now? And just ask God for wisdom. Mention the name of that person. I say, Lord, give me the wisdom to manage this person. I want to win with this person. It must be a win-win situation. Yeah. Give me the wisdom to manage this person. I don't want to be manipulative. I don't want to be cantankerous. But I know your will for me is to win in that situation. And Lord, give me the wisdom. Give me the wisdom to manage this person. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. Lift your two hands with me, everyone. Everyone online, join us as we pray right now. Father, we thank you. You revealed to redeem. And you brought this word to us today. That you may help us to shift lane. To shift perspective. We receive your wisdom over everyone under the influence of this service this morning. And we declare that your hand rests upon us. Moving us in the right direction. We will not be stranded. In the name of Jesus, men and women will open doors to us. Doors will no longer shut against us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare today a fresh release of wisdom to love people and to work with people that we may win with people. In the name of Jesus, the wisdom to confound the adversary, the wisdom to confound wickedness, we receive this morning. And if there's anyone here who has stagnated because of lack of wisdom to win with people, we decree an end has come to stagnation. And we declare today that doors are open unto you. As you go into this week, the wisdom of God attends to you. And God meets you at every point of need. Men and women will no longer run away from you. In the name of Jesus, where there has been depression and anguish, I stand against negative emotions today. And I decree that the oil of joy comes upon your life. In the precious name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody bless this morning. Put your hands together. Celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Just one last prayer before we bring the service to a close. Can you please bow down your head? We love to give people the opportunity to commit their lives to Jesus every time we gather together. And today will not be different. The time is fast spent, but I will still want to do this. If you can bow down your heads with me, please do. If there's anyone here this morning, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Or maybe you said a prayer before, but you backslid into sin, and you want to ask God for forgiveness. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I want to pray for you right now. That wisdom of God is available to you, and you need to leverage it, and it starts with a relationship with God. If you're far from God, you can't hear him when he starts to speak to you and direct you. And the Bible says this, the prayer of the wicked is an abomination to God, but the desires of the righteous are his delight. And our righteousness is through the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, not our own works. And when we accept his saving grace, our sins are forgiven and we are reconnected with God. Somebody here this morning wants to say, I want to reconnect with my maker. I want Jesus to come into my life. I'm too far away. Can you lift your right hand above your head and let me say a prayer with you this morning? I want to give my life to Jesus, or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want you to just lift your right hand above your head. Remain where you are, and let's say a prayer together. Let's say a prayer together. If you are lifting your hand, I want you to do it well. You are not lifting it to the pastor, you are lifting it to God. He is the Savior. No man can save another. Only Jesus saves. So if you are lifting your hand, I want you to lift it well to him. And just let's acknowledge him as our Savior this morning. If your hand is up, can you stand by a chair right there? Just remain where you have or stand and let's pray together. Stand. Thank you for standing. Just stand and let's pray together. Stand and let's pray together. Thank you for standing, my brother. Just stand and let's pray together. I'm still waiting to, for just one or two more people. God is knocking at the door of your heart. Don't resist him. Don't resist him. I said this prayer myself before, several years ago, and God started to walk in my life, leading and guiding me into the fullness of his truth. If God is touching your heart right now, join the people standing and stand and say this prayer with me. It's just a one-minute prayer, and your life will never be the same again. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you, my sister down there. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing.
Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. If you're standing, I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I cannot help myself. I need a savior. I consciously invite you today to come into my life. Be my savior. Be my Lord. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I receive you today fully into my heart. Fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning from this moment forward. Thank you for accepting me. In the name of Jesus. If you just said the prayer, can you walk to the house that is closest to you? Walk to the side that is closest to you. Our counselors are there and I just want to spend a minute with you. If you don't mind, just pick your bag and just walk, walk with them and just follow them. Not, nothing to be ashamed of at all. We all say this prayer at one time or the other in our lives. We want to be able to put uh, some materials in your hand and help you. My sisters, if you don't mind, can you please join them? Uh, it will be, uh, do you a great lot of good, a great good if you join them uh, because we'll be able to play our part to help you to become a stronger Christian. And we all need the support that we can get. And this is a responsible church. We have structures in place to help every young believer to grow, especially 